Hi everyone. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install T-lock shingles. There's no other videos on YouTube on this topic that I could find, so this is going to be sort of an exclusive video. But what we're doing here is replicating sort of a 1960s, 70s style building. And we have these brand new T-lock shingles, never been used, still in the package. The date on them says May 02, I'm assuming that's the date, but we're gonna try and install these. Um, I'm technically, you know, not old enough to have been around for these, but I will finally get a chance to install them. All right, so opening up the first bundle here. Oh, these are Aiko shingles wrapped. 300, three bundles covers 100 square feet. So yeah, it's exact same calculations as a modern day bundle of shingles, which is how I calculated for this roof. So we should have exactly enough, fingers crossed. Now, according to installation guy, nobody ever taught me how to shingle with these. It's just, you know, from observations, I've ripped a lot of T-lock roofs. winter and it's never never ideal to shingle in the winter but but with these shingles there's no tabs no glues or anything like that so i just snapped the line for the top of the shingle here to make it a little easier to line everything up properly. Now I'll come back here. This is a nice old-fashioned color too, sort of a white. They call it white, but it looks so, sort of gray. But yeah, I might as well. Bit 
trickier when the shingles are cold, just because you don't want to break them, right? using these snips when it's cold out. You get a way cleaner cut. Looks like I'm sort of going a little bit off kilter. I'll have to sort of clean that up a little bit. First one's just hard because you don't have anywhere to, to place yourself, right? I'll worry about that later. Alright, so we're making good progress here, starting to see that nice pattern of the T-locks that I like. It's just going to be something a little bit different that you don't see all that often anymore. And I got these shingles for free, so if I have to replace them in five years or whatever, then so be it. But for now, I'll have this cool retro look. All right, so I'm calling it a day for shingling. It's getting pretty dark out. Those ones, I think they just got dust on them. They look a little discolored, but yeah, got most of it done. I think I might be able to finish this with this bundle. That would mean I have two left. Yeah, we'll be pretty close. Okay, so just sort of finishing up on this first side here, I got to that end and I'll show you what I do there I'll need some more starter Just feel for the overhang. Make sure it's the same. Now, take this piece. Or actually, I should use some of these ones that I deemed crappier. They just got like lines in them from the wires or whatever. But being on the edge, there's a chance that that will be cut off. Line that up nice and square. These edge ones, I just put two nails in 
so when I go with my snips, it's not twisting on me or anything. It's held firm. And then your snips just sort of follow the guide of the leading edge you put down. Now these edge ones, I will probably have to come back and just blackjack under here because there is no built-in glue like a modern architectural shingle. The starter's got glue on it, but that, that'll only hold down the top of the first shingle. It won't hold that. So these T-locks are extremely wind resistant. Just the weakest spots are the edges. So on a warmer day, I'll just put a glob of blackjack underneath all these flaps and that should hold them down. Now I sorta like to go in longer stretches like this, just so I'm confident that everything is square and where it should be just because this is my first time working with these. I'm a little bit more cautious. Actually, I shouldn't say this is my first time. Um, we did a patch job in the fall where the some had blown off on the top. And that's the thing, like you can't really patch these like a regular shingle. Like if one's wrecked down here, you pretty much got to take it top down and then put it all back together like a puzzle. But we did something like that in the fall for a client who had their own leftover shingles. But I mean, this is my first time actually installing a full T-lock roof start to finish. Grab a couple right away. Everything nice and tight, it all lined up nice. And there. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this will be our last, last course. Some of them there's like a gap there, but that doesn't really matter because you got quite a bit of play in here. I'm not sure, probably just because the shingles are cut slightly differently. Not everything gets cut in the exact same way. I imagine this would be a little bit easier to do in the summertime when the shingles are a bit warmer. I'm not sure how many shingles are in a bundle. I think there's 30 maybe, 27, it's kind of an odd number. Hopefully I have enough. I'm on. I just tapped into bundle number eight right now. And I'm just finishing up this side. See, here's one that's lining up just a little bit wonky. Square that up, perfect.
just one on the end. So that was another six. So I used 12 out of that bundle. So I'll do a count when I'm done here. Okay, now the next step will be cut those tabs off the bottom and move them up here and then we'll be perfect. Now shingling around this vent is going to be a little bit of a learning experience for me because I've never done it before. But all types of shingles, you know, whatever you're working with, it's the same idea. Do it in such a way that it doesn't leak. You just sort of have to think it through. So I'll just kind of show you the steps as I'm going here. This course I tucked underneath, same with this course. And then I think it will be the next course that will overlap. But I'll just sort of work, work around here and get it figured out. Now moving on to the next course, I have the approximate shape that I need cut out. So that'll just slip under there. It's hard to do with one hand. My GoPro is frozen again. But then I'll tuck that in how it's got to go. And then we'll be on to overlapping the flashing. So I made my way around the chimney. I just used one of these darker ones that I had just because it's not going to be very visible. And I'm not sure that I'm going to have enough. So, you know, it could be the matter of one shingle. So I figured I'd use that there. And according to my calculations, I'm probably going to be a couple shingles short. So I'll keep going. That uh, Most of that will get covered so you won't really see it. But yeah, we're past the worst part. Now it'll just be overlapping and keeping that curve nice. I actually got it pretty good. The stove's going, so I just set the shingle on top of there to get it warm. And then I just took my hook blade and cut around it made a nice cut so I'll keep going so I sort of have it cut roughly how I need with the snips now I'm just letting it warm up here that's the only thing about shingling in winter you sort of need your shingles to be warm in order to make clean curved cuts around vents and chimneys and stuff for the edges, you can just use snips, and that'll make a nice, clean, straight cut, but... Okay, that should be warm enough. Now, with my hook blade, I can just very carefully... I need a new blade. That one's not sharp enough. Now, I've got one bundle of shingles left. Will we make it? I don't know. And there we are, finished. Shingles left over. That's actually kind of amazing. Now I feel like I have to <laughs> go change this out. But that did take me a few attempts to get that right. So that would have left me with like two shingles left over. Or maybe three. I think we got, what, six there? So. That's pretty good for cutting it close, being that I just happened on this particular amount of shingles and, yeah, was able to use them that efficiently. Now the last step for the shingle application is to cut off these bottom tabs and put them up at the top, then ridge cap can go on. Now these pieces that I cut off just slip in at the top just like that and the ridge cap should be enough to cover that so now i'm starting on ridge cap now this was sort of a lucky match it's not these are a different brand shingles these three tabs i think they're an owens corning um they were left over from when the addition was built on the farmhouse. They were just sitting in the Quonset, so I grabbed them. But the color match to these Ico shingles is pretty much bang on. Um, it's sort of cloudy and foggy right now, so, I mean, 
in real life, I guess the camera matches it pretty close. It does look like an exact match almost. But yeah, you can see how close we're cutting it with those. If that would have been say an inch higher, that would have been catastrophic. Wouldn't have had enough shingles. But I got my line snapped, so we'll have a nice straight ridge, and I'll just keep cutting these caps out of three tab. Something else I should mention when doing ridge cap, you always want to keep in mind your directions. So that's north over there, and we usually get a lot of our winds from the northwest. Um, that's out of town over there, so that's a really vulnerable area so starting the ridge cap i want to lap them this way just because the wind that we get from this direction is quite minimal say nine times out of ten it's coming from this direction so if i were to start the ridge the other way then the wind would always be catching these flaps here so that's just something to keep in mind now I'm kind of working in the dark here, but since it's so foggy, all the lights around town kind of light the sky up. So I can sort of see what I'm doing, but I got all these ridge cap cut and I just let them warm up. So they contoured nice. And then, yeah, I'm just putting them on here, but I think that's as far as I'm gonna go tonight. Um, I'm getting sort of cold. So I'll go down and cut more and then fit the rest of them tomorrow. Bridge cap is all finished up, nice and straight line. So yeah, that's it for this roof. It'll keep the snow out for now. So I just wanna show this roof one last time before I put this video out tonight. It's been a couple months since those last clips. Everything's holding up really well. Um, a little bit more snow has melted off of it. It's kind of starting to melt here. So yeah, everything looks really good up here. And yeah, it should be a very wind resistant roof as sort of right on the edge of town here. So pretty vulnerable area. I hope you enjoyed that video. Sort of a cool look at some retro building techniques. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I sort of do a lot of cool, quirky stuff like that that normal people don't really do. So if you're interested in that, be sure to follow along and check it out. Until next time, thanks for watching.